Hi everybody, welcome back to the next in my series of updated for 2024 Beginner's Guide to Modding Your PC Daisy Community Server. And in this video, we're going to be looking at the files that are on your server, just to give you a brief background, or not so brief background, on the important ones and what they do, kind of an overview of how things work. I'm going to try and not get go into specific details about how to use each file but just to give you the flavor of kind of what's happening so that when you're watching some of the other two tutorials when we're using these files you can kind of see how they interact with each other um, which I think can be very helpful but before we start I'd like to remind you that in the description below this video is a link to this playlist and these are all the videos that I've done uh, that I've updated for 2024 about uh, uh, modding your PC Daisy community server so you can pick out the ones that you want to learn from also you'll find a previous and next link I've tried to record these in somewhat of a logical order if you're new to um, PC community server Daisy modding um, and also you'll see a link to a similar playlist that's aimed at console so if you're watching this and you've come from the console side of things then by all means cl click over to that one now lots of the things are very similar between the two but some things aren't so you can always have a look at the console ones so without further ado what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going through uh the file browser and this is a nitrado pc daisy community server and we're also going to be looking at a local server as well and i highly recommend if you haven't already and i'll put a link to this in the description below this video as well is if you're going to be modding pc daisy community servers then you really should have on your local pc installed a local server now this comes free when you own daisy it's in the tool section and this video uh, that will be linked in the description shows you how to install it but it means that you can learn how to mod a server and most importantly test your mods before you upload them to the cloud before you upload them to your remote server um, and of course the, the files are basically the same however often you'll find on your server in the cloud in this case in Archado, there's some files that you're not allowed to see you're not allowed to mess with them especially on servers where it's um, a, a shared rack. So, for example, this server from Nitrado, this DAISY server, I don't have my own computer in a rack in a, da in a um, data center in London somewhere. There's a, there's a computer in a rack that's got dozens of DAISY servers on, of which mine is only one of them. So they have to li limit access to certain things so it doesn't allow you to ruin that computer for, for everybody else. But... On the local server we get to see everything so without further ado let's click on this daisy standalone and we're into the server okay let's go full screen so we can kind of have a look at that now this is kind of i guess you'd call this the root directory of the server and where you see files or directories that have got an at sign or an ampersand in front of them that means these are mods so you've got VPP admin mods on the server, Zombri admin mods on there as well. So that changes the game. These admin mods basically enable me to do things like um, teleport around the map and see what stuff spawned in and spawn stuff in myself and be um, have god mode so my character doesn't take any damage and stuff like that. Now, as we scroll down a little bit further, we have config. Now, config is an incredibly important uh, directory. However... Um, <laughs> config can be called different things and this can be a little bit confusing so the config folder often contains the settings for mods and things about the game as well so if for example zombie fires up um, if it needs to save some settings for itself that it can then refer to it will put them in the config folder <coughs> but as i said the config folder could, could, doesn't have to be called config. It could be con. It, be, blah, it could be called settings. Often it's called profile or profiles and things like that. Um, and generally, the way that you'll recognise it on a running server is that inside the config folder, you'll have it will say like VPP admin, or it will say Daisy Dog, but so which is the name of the mod, but there'll be no at sign. And then if you go into that folder, you'll see settings for that particular. Um, that particular uh, mod so let's scroll down a little bit further uh, now keys this is another really important folder so keys. so whenever you install a mod 
you install the mod itself on the server you basically copy the mod from your local PC to your server but there's other things you have to do as well and one of the most important things and the thing that's one of the easiest things to forget to do is to add a key so when you um, subscribe to a mod on Steam it download, downloads to your local PC when you fire up the daisy launcher and within that mod there'll be a key and the key is the thing that you upload to your server into the keys folder that tells the server um, that it's kind of allowed to run this mod and it matches them up it also means that when people join the server um, with a particular mod that key must be in uh, this folder and the mod must be running for it to work the most common problem I come across when I do my own mod well sorry when I'm installing mods is forgetting to add the key because it's very easy to do so that's the key let's scroll down a bit further now MP missions again super important so if we go into MP missions this is where you're gonna be spending an awful lot of your time when you're modding things like loot and events as you can see we've got two missions we've got Chernerus Plus and Enoch and these are the two maps that are installed on this particular server there's Chernerus and Enoch is Livonia if we had custom maps say Namalsk there would be Daisy Offline dot Livonia uh, Daisy Offline dot uh, Namalsk or whatever it's called um, and then we go into these so we're going to Chernerus for example we then have lots of different files the important one is storage and I'm just picking that one out for now because each mission has its own little storage folder I don't know if there'll be one in this one because I don't know whether this server yeah this server's never run as Livonia but if it had run as Livonia there would be a storage folder so what that means is whenever you, when you have a server and you're running Chernerus if you change over to Livonia it's that's a separate storage folder with all the data for the players and the loot and the zombies and all that sort of stuff in the buildings so it means that you can switch from one one map to the other and you, your old map with your old progress will still stay there so when you sw swatch swatch switch back again it'll all be there so let's go back to the go back to here again so I just want to so let's just scroll down a little bit now there's certain things here that we can't see um, that are hidden by Nitrado and may well be hidden by your server provider as well so let's go into the local server so you can see the local server looks very similar we have all the mods here at they're all there and in fact in this one <laughs> there's lots of mods because I do lots of testing if we go to this one so we're going to config which again could be called profiles you can see these are all the mods I was talking about so there's the daisy dog folder so there's the settings that the daisy dog mod needs to save um, there's VPP admin there's the settings that that needs to save um, so, so that's there and depending on the mod sometimes you'll have to set up this folder yourself most of the time once the server has run through once the mod will set up its own server now if we scroll down what we can see on our local server is daisy server underscore x64 so that's the app that is the daisy server app and you see it's not very big <laughs> at all 15 megabytes really tiddly isn't it yeah it does all these other things because it's relying on all these other files however your daisy server it's not just a case of double clicking it and starting it you need to start it with certain settings enabled you know you need to be able to tell the server well which map are you meant to be running what mods are you meant to be running uh, how fast should the time be running because if you think when your server starts or when you log into a server it's not like you're given a menu of options saying um, can I have the night only be 10 minutes and the day be eight hours long or I'd like more loot please or I'd like this to be in the mouse you, you don't get that and there there isn't any admin panel that we can go into where we can change that in game the way that these things are set are by by two files one is a Windows batch file a dot bat file and the other is the server DZ dot config file so let's take a look at these so if we scroll down here now you'll see I'll, you'll notice that I have a lot of these dot batch files and I have quite a few of these config files and this is because this is my local server it's my test server so I'm constantly trying different combinations of mods and maps with it and to make that easy rather than changing particular um, settings I just have lots of different files so if we open one of these batch files we can look at it here so this particular batch file this is the one that starts the server with uh, the CF mod zombie admin tools the daisy dog mod the daisy horse mod and the red falcon flight systems helis mod now if you're on nitrado you've set these in the I think it's general settings you put these mods in we don't have access to this file um, 
from from the file browser so as you can see it's there and it has things like the name of the server there um, where this where the, um, the server is on the hard drive um, where the config file is and which config file to use and the con config file the .cfg file that's the file that among lots of other things tells the server which map to start off with um, and there you go you've got the where's the name of the server as well here we go and then you've got the start bit there start daisy server which is daisy server underscore x for 64 underscore exe and start it with those mods and there's some other um, little uh, settings as well that are on there so that kind of fires up the server then if we look at the server dz.config it's got like the name if there was a password and then it's got things like um, uh, how fast the time should pass like that and then down here we have the template or the mission that it's running. So this is running Chernus Plus. It could run. Um, uh, what else have we got? So Enoch. There we go. So there's a custom map that I've used a few times. Tekistan Plus, Empty Dot Deerile, Regular Dot The Mask. So they're those files as well. So let's go back to the MP missions now. So let's go into here. And then it's going to take us in. Let's go back to the file browser. File browser, Daisy standalone. Uh, MP missions. And let's go into Daisy offline .churnus plus. Right, so here we go. So I would call this the root directory of the mission. So let's, let's have a look at some of the things in here. So we have our custom folder. Now on PC, you don't have to have a custom folder. But on console, if you want to add something like an extra house to the map, the file that does that must be in a directory called custom. So what I, in all my tutorial videos, you'll see that when I do things like that, when I'm adding extra files to my server, whether it be for console or for PC, I always put them in a custom folder. So it's the same for console and PC. And the good thing about having a custom folder, let's just go in and have a quick look at it, um, is that it means that your extra things are in the same place. So for example, this file here is a file that gives me a load of structures up at the northeast airfield and a load of gear so I can do like videos on them on, on how to use things in tutorials so that's custom DB if we go into the DB directory we've got some really important um, files here we've got types.xml that controls what and the amount of loot that's spawning in so it's a very big file not 790 um, kilobytes remember these are text files XML is a text file and so it'll say it'll tell you, you know how many M4A ones, uh, how many cans of beans are meant to spawn in, all that sort of stuff. Um, messages. That's basically when your server does a restart, what it comes in the bottom left hand side of the screen. Globals has lots of settings in, um, ranging from whether stuff should spawn in damaged or how damaged it should be to how long it takes to spawn in, uh, the maximum number of zombies, maximum number of animals, things like that. Events.xml, another important file. So this controls. The, uh, how often things like helicopter crashes happen or zombies um, uh, sp kind of zombies spawning sort of um, things like uh, the trains when they spawn in and the uh, police um, uh, convoys and the military convoys that sort of thing um, what other thing could be things like the bears and the animals how often they spawn in and where they spawn in um, and then the economy one, actually, let's quick look at economy. Yeah, you probably won't look at economy. We, we use economy, or we used to use economy, to do different types of wipes, but ignore that. We don't really use them anymore in that particular way. So let's go into the ENV folder. So let's have a look in this one. Very important folder. This one has details about where animals should be spawning and how many animals should be spawning so the bear territories that xml create they'll contain lots and lots of coordinates so if you could take in fact we can go in can't we and have a quick look you can see you've got all these coordinates and all these groups so it's telling um the, the server look this is where bears spawn and with zombies it tells them you know this is how many should spawn so a uh, very important uh, directory they're, they're all important I don't know why I'm saying that we talked about storage so the storage folder contains things like player data what players are carrying where they are buildings that have been built um, where the loot is all that sort of thing so a very important folder as well I'm gonna try and stop saying that because they're all important and then as we scroll down we have lots of uh, config files that are XML things um, so cfg gameplay.json 
this one is a very important one this has things like whether you can use custom buildings on your server you turn it on and off um, it contains things like uh, temperature um, whether players need uh, to have a compass when they look at the map to give them the coordinates um, things like stamina a control to cfg gameplay cfg ignore list xml that's a file we use to uh, among other things is how we can use it to wipe certain things from a server if we want to say vehicles and then respawn them in afterwards uh, cfg player spawn points just what it sounds like this contains lots of coordinates so where players spawn Spawnable types. Spawnable types is a really cool file. So what this does is if an item spawns in and it could well have something else in it or on it, this file tells the server what that should be. For example, a can of fuel. So if that spawns in, sorry, that's a bad example, not a can of fuel, uh, a rifle. So if a rifle spawns in, should it spawn in with, with a suppressor? or a magazine or a scope you know what are the chances of that it's a, if it's a vehicle should it spawn in with wheels or doors or a bonnet or a battery or a radiator and what are the chances of that happening so we, we have lots of fun with cfg spawnable types cfg weather controls the weather don't mess with that too much um, and now these files here that on this nitrado server are grayed out it just means we can't actually access them at the moment sometimes when you stop the server you can but most of the time in order to edit them you need to download the files that way um, and then now that we have, have map group pos and map group proto when we look at things like custom buildings what these do map group pos tells the server where buildings are and the orientation that they are in doesn't tell the server to spawn that building in just tells them where they are and then map group proto that tells the server what loot to spawn in the buildings so for example map group pos will say there's a police station at this coordinates and then map group proto says in a police station this is what you spawn in and you spawn in you know a chance of a gun here and a shotgun here and a pair of pants here a pair of handcuffs here um, and that's the kind of the way that you do it so there we go i think we've covered a lot of ground here haven't we um hopefully that gives you a little bit of a background into some of the more important files on your server so that when we come to actually play around with them you'll be able to kind of link them up and have a better idea of how they all go together okay so hopefully this has been useful if it has it like you want to see more the same press subscribe and of course i'll see you again soon